Okay, so we have two sum formulas that we use for geometric series. The first one is Sn equals A1, my first term, times 1 minus R to the N power, divided by 1 minus R. My second sum formula is A1 minus An times R, divided by 1 minus R. What the information that's given to me will determine which equation I use, right? Yes. So, in my first example, I'm asked to find the sum of the series for which A1 equals 7,776, An equals 6, and R equals negative 1 8. Which formula am I going to use? The second one. Why? Because I know A1, A1, I know An, and I know R, so that's my second equation, okay? So then we plug it in and we use our calculators to evaluate it. S of N equals 7,776 minus An, 6 times negative 1 eighth times R divided by 1 minus negative 1 eighth. Take a second and multiply my negative 6 and my negative 1 eighth, and what do I get? I get a positive, right? 6 times 1 eighth is what? 6 eighths, which is reduced to... Three fourths. So I get 7,776 and three fourths. If I'm adding 7,776 plus three fourths, I get, but it's minus a ne minus times a negative, so that becomes plus. Right? Over one and one eighth. Which, if you wanted to, you could plug it into your calculator to get decimals, right? So we're going to do our uh, use our calculator here. Okay, so let's convert this to some decimals, make it a little faster. 7776.75 seven, divided by 1.125. And we get something like 6912.67. And that is our sum of the series. So take a second and try the second problem on the right. You're doing this problem here. A1 is 2, AN is 486, and R is 3. Use the formula to find the sum of that series. Okay, so we should have got 728. Let's look at the next problem. Find the sum for which, um, for which A1 is 4, N is 6, and R is negative 3. Which equation uses A1, N, and R? The first equation. So let's plug in our information. S of 6, it's not Sn because I know N equals 6, right? So we're using A1, so A1 for 1 minus negative 3 to the 6th power over 1 minus negative 3. Now the order of operations is so important here. You guys have a tendency to want to make this a positive and that doesn't work. Because you have to do negative 3 to the 6th power before you can subtract. Okay, so negative 3 to the 6th power is 729 over... Now this one, the denominator, I can make positive because I'm not raising the 3 to any power. So I get that over 4. And what happens to my 4s? They cancel, and I get negative 728. Hmm? Give the next problem a try, where A1 equals 5, 
N is 14 and R is 2. Make sure you're using order of operations exponents before multiply, before addition, subtraction. Evaluate the numerator before the and the denominator separately. So we get 80, oops, 81,915. Okay. So we're going to do... Okay, so one of the problems on tomorrow's quiz is going to be like this. It gives you A1 equals 2, AN is 486, R is equal to 3, and you need to find N. Which equation has AN, R, A1, and N in it? The first one. The first one. AN equals A1 times R to the n minus 1. And we can solve for n. This is why we save this or this unit for last. After we've done everything, we can bring in all of our strategies for solving equations. So an is 486, and that equals 2 times 3 to the n minus 1 power. Just plugging in what I know, right? Mm -hmm. Now, how can I solve that? Do I multiply the 2 times the 3? No. no, because I have this variable in the exponent, so I need to divide by the 2 because it's being multiplied. And 486 divided by 2 is? 243 equals 3 to the n minus 1 power. And how do we solve equations when the variables are in the exponents? Logs. Yes. Or I could rewrite it as a log, or I could rewrite 243 as a power of 3. Okay, so 243 is 3 to what power? The fifth. Yes, I will do both ways. So if I rewrite it, 243 is 3 to the fifth, right? Mm -hmm. And then what do I do? 5 equals n minus 1. So n equals 6. Now if I wanted to do a log instead, log base what? 3 of 243 equals n minus 1. The log base 3 of 243 is 5, so n is 6. I promise I'll give you logs that you know, well, that you're supposed to know. Wait, how do you do the how do you do the I just did it the other way. Okay, so here's another problem using the sum formulas. The sum of n terms is 10,160. A n is 5,120. And R is 2. Can you find A 1? Yes. We'll use the second equation, which was SN. Here's a strategy for making sure you have the formulas memorized. Rewrite them on every single problem. Write the, pro the equation that you're going to use. A1 minus AN times R over 1 minus R. Plug in what you know. Take a second, plug in. So when I plug in my numbers, I get 10,160 equals A1 minus, minus 5,120 times 2 over 1 minus 2, which is 10,160 equals A1 minus 10,240 divided by negative 1. What can I do to get rid of that negative 1? Let's just multiply by negative 1 to get rid of it. And you get negative 10,160 equals A1 minus 10,240. 
because I multiplied by it just so I could cancel the negative in the denominator. Does the A1 get a negative now? No. I'm moving the negative to the other side, basically. Wait, the, doesn't it turn into a positive? And then you add. Then I add 10,240. A1 equals 80. So here's an example of an infinite series. This triangle, right, we cut this into the three big triangles. And then we cut the top triangle, and then the next triangle, and the next triangle, and it goes on infinitely, right? If the biggest triangle, the whole triangle is one, what's the area of the black triangles? It's a third. Aren't the black triangles a third of the big triangle? So even though this infinitely gets smaller and smaller and smaller, it actually has an area that we can look at and see that it is one-third, okay? So this is a visual example of how a infinite series can have a sum. No. No, all of the black triangles. If we look at all the black triangles here, this is like one-third, right? And the gray is one-third, and the white ones are one-third. Okay? Right, because it makes up one-third of the whole triangle. See it? If you divide it. Okay. So, we have infinite geometric series. And some of them will actually have a sum. Yes, it is infinite. An infinite series that continues to get larger will not have a sum. That's called divergent. Okay, that's this term here, divergent. It does not have a sum because it continues to get larger. But when an infinite series gets smaller and smaller and smaller, it's like you're continually adding on another decimal place. And you're eventually you're adding zero because that number is so small. You're not really adding any value to it. And that is where we get a convergent infinite series. In order for them to be uh, convergent, the absolute value of R has to be less than one. That means we ignore the negative sign, right? That's what absolute value is. So as long as our R without the negative is less than 1, it's going to have a sum because you're continually adding a smaller number every time. It's kind of like the idea of the asymptotes. It's getting closer and closer and closer to that number but never actually gets there. Well, this, when you add up all those numbers, you actually get a sum. So if the R is greater than or equal to 1 without the negative sign, then it's divergent and it does not have a sum. So remember that this could also be written negative 1 less than r less than 1. So if r is between negative 1 and 1, it will have a sum. If r is greater than or equal to 1 or r is less than or equal to negative 1, it will not have a sum. And we just write no sum. The equation, the formula for the sum of an infinite geometric series only works with geometric. Okay. Uh, with r between negative 1 and 1 is given by the equation s equals a1, the first term, divided by 1 minus r. That's our last formula. a1 divided by 1 minus r. Pretty easy formula to use. So let's do some examples. These are three examples, well, six. One, two, three separate examples. How do I know that this summation notation is asking me for it's an infinite series? There's a little infinity on top. Okay. And this one, we know it's infinite because it has a dot, dot, dot. 
And it doesn't give you an ending point, right? It doesn't tell you what n is. It just gives you that dot, 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 and nothing else. That means it is also infinite. So remember when we looked at summation notation on Friday, we said that this is in the form a1 times r to the n minus 1. Doesn't this look like that, a1 times r to the n minus 1? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. So what is my a1? 5. 5. And what is my r? 1 half. And this tells me I'm using the infinite sum formula, a1 divided by 1 minus r. Yep. 5 divided by 1 minus 1 half, which is 5 divided by 1 half, which is 10. That's my sum. Try the next one. The sum from 1 to infinity of 2 times 1 third to the k minus 1. Okay, so let's just do this together real quick. What's my a1? 2. And my r? So 1 minus 1 third, which is 2 divided by 2 thirds. Okay? So I multiply by the reciprocal 2 times 3 over 2. And then the 2's cancel, and I just get 3. Okay, so let's look at this next example here. What's my A1? Negative 4 thirds. What's my R? Negative 3. Aren't I multiplying by a negative 3 every time? 4 times what gives you negative 12? Negative 3. Negative 12 times what gives you negative 36? Negative 3. Can there be a sum if r is equal to negative 3? No. No, there cannot. So we write no sum. Woo! Has to be between 1 and negative 1 in order to have a sum. R has to be between 1 and negative 1 in order to have a sum. Otherwise, your series is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If you keep getting bigger infinitely, you're not actually going to achieve a sum. But when we get smaller infinitely, that's when we can get a sum because we're really just adding on another decimal place, another decimal place, to the point where it's pretty much equal to 10 or 3. So do the next one. Identify your a1 and your r here, and if it has a sum, tell me what it is. So what is my a1? Negative 5 halves, and my r is negative 2, so that means there is no sum. No sum. Okay, what about the last one? The... 3 plus 3 halves plus 3 fourths plus 3 eighths. What is my A1? My A1 is 3, right? What's my R? My R is 1 half. Do you see it? Times by 1 half. Times by 1 half. What can you do if you don't see that it's 1 half? You do A2 divided by A1 because it's a geometric, and that's what you need to look for on the test when you have both geometric and arithmetic. You're going to have to ask yourself, am I adding the same term every time, or am I multiplying the same thing every time, right? So that's the first thing you're going to have to identify on the test is whether you're looking at arithmetic or geometric. Geometric is multiplying every time. So now that I know my A1 and my R, what's my sum? 3 over 1 minus 1 half, which is 6. And you can give the next one a try. What is my A1? What is my R? So 5 divided by 1 minus 1 half is 10. Okay.